I can't move the slides. No, you can't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just want to uh, introduce our hosts. We have Megan Sheehan, our trainer and business analyst, and Chris Heyman, our software engineer and business analyst. And so they're going to take us through this information today. If you have any questions throughout, feel free to type those in that chat box, and we will get to them as soon as we can. So with that, I'll turn the floor over to Megan and Chris. Uh, so today we're going to talk about duplicate rules, uh, searching for duplicates, and merging of duplicates. Um, so we'll go through the basics of finding and merging duplicates, the basics of duplicate rules, how to configure duplicate rules, uh, the methods of searching for duplicates, and the process of actually merging those duplicate records. And then we'll go through some of the new and upcoming releases, uh, talk about some upcoming events, so future user groups, uh, and then we'll end with uh, Q&A. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat. All right, this is probably fairly obvious to everyone here, but um, finding and merging duplicates obviously helps maintain the quality of your data in Creatio. Um, and we should probably say, although I'm sure everyone already knows this, Creatio is the, of course, new name for BPM Online. So hopefully we'll be really good and remember to use the new name throughout, but try not to be too uh, hard on us if we forget a couple of times. Obviously having duplicates in your data is not great. Um, it's going to cause you know, metrics to be off in your reports and confusion for your users when they're trying to figure out which record to update, but we all know duplicates happen. And so Creatio has a couple of different techniques that you can use to find duplicates. Um, one is the local duplicate search, which actually happens when you're creating a new record. So before it even exists as a duplicate in the database, it will give you a warning if you are creating something that looks like it could be a duplicate. And there's also the bulk duplicate search that allows you to, after the fact, scan through all of your records and find possible duplicates. Um, and we're going to see there's a couple different ways you can do that in a manual versus an automatic run. Duplicate search is available out of the box in the accounts, contacts, and leads sections. You can also enable it for custom sections or other out of the box sections as well. Um, and the duplicate search is executed based on duplicate rules. So that's how Creatio knows what to look at in order to decide if something is a duplicate or not. So the basics of duplicate rules. Uh, as it says here, duplicate rules can be customized for the accounts, contacts, and leads section, which we mentioned earlier, um, but they can also be set up, as Megan mentioned, for any Creatio sections, including custom sections that you, you built um, outside of the out-of-the-box section. Uh, the following capabilities exist. Um, when you're uh, working with duplicate rules. So uh, duplicate rules can be created based on a text or lookup field in any section. Uh, when you're working with the rules, you have the ability to enable and disable individual rules as you see fit. You can also specify which rules are used when saving an actual record. So that, that's outside of the actual um, bulk search that you can do. So when you're actually just saving a record, you can set which rules are, are enabled just for that process. And you can also remove unused rules um, that, you're, that you no longer need. You can, you can deactivate them, but you can also delete them, uh, with the exception of a few rules relating to account and contact search in the lead section. <clears throat> so how do you actually create or edit duplicate rules? Um, well, there is a setup duplicate, setup duplicate rules link in the system designer. Um, so we're going to go through this in a minute, but before we do that, just to kind of set the stage, um, when you're creating a new rule or editing a rule, um, you're going to set the section where the rule is going to be used. You're going to set whether or not the rule is active, which as Chris just explained, means whether or not that rule is currently being used. Um, you're also going to set whether or not that rule is used for that local duplicate search, the one that happens when you're creating new records with the use this rule on save attribute. Um, and then you're going to select which fields are being used when you're using this duplicate rule. 
So you'll have one or more fields that you select um, that it's going to be looking at for this particular duplicate rule. You can have multiple duplicate rules for the same section. In fact, out of the box for accounts and contacts and leads, there are quite a few already. Um, and if you have multiple attributes or multiple fields in the same rule, the logic that's being used for that search is AND logic. So if I say, for example, the name and the city are matched in my rule, then it's only going to find records where the name and the city both match. When I have multiple rules, each rule is being checked, each active rule is being checked, and there's an OR connector between the different rules. So if I have one rule that says name and city match, and another rule that says name and website match, it's checking do the name and city match or do the name and website match. So let's actually bring up Creatio and take a look at this. I'm going to go over to the system designer. And then under the system setup section, there is the setup duplicate rules. And here we can see a list of all of the duplicate rules that currently exist. So like I said, you can see that off the shelf, there are quite a few rules already in here, including multiple for accounts and contacts. Um, if we look at one of these, let's just look at this guy, for example. Um, this rule is matching on three values. So the name matches and the email matches and the city matches in order for this rule to find something as a duplicate. With an existing rule, we could come in here and add or remove attributes. Um, and probably more likely we can change whether or not this rule is active, as well as whether or not this rule is used on creation of new records um, for that local duplicate search. When we're creating a new rule, it looks very much the same. So if I want to create a new rule to match on name and phone number, for example, for accounts, I could click the account section for my rule type, make this rule active, decide if I want to use this rule on save. Um, in this case, I'm not going to turn that on primarily because I know there's already a rule matching just on account name on save, so there's no point also matching on account name plus phone number because I've already covered that case with just the account name match. And then I'm going to go to this attribute section, and this is where I'm going to pick the fields that I want to include. So this is where I pick the name field and the, I say phone number, the phone number field. Um, phone number, as you might recall, is something that's tracked in the communication option. Um, that's going to be down at the very bottom where you can connect to some of the t details from the communication options detail. You can also connect to certain fields from the address detail. Um, so you'll see those down at the bottom of the list. And once I'm done selecting rules, or se selecting fields, I should say, I would just go ahead and save this new rule. Um, that is something that in order for that rule to take effect, I have to log out and log back in. So I guess I'll go ahead and do that really quick. And perhaps I'll do that on my other screen while we go ahead and move on to the next slide. So as we mentioned, um, duplicate rules can be disabled and or deleted via the, the setup duplicate rules link in the system designer. So the same area we we're just looking at creating new ones. Um, the same location where you're going to disable them. Uh, so disabling is just unchecking that active checkbox. So all that does is actually stops the system from using that rule when it does duplicate checks. You can also permanently delete a rule, and you just do that by actually clicking on one of the line items for the rule, um, not on the name, because that's going to take you into the rule itself, but next to it, and then you just click the delete button that pops up. Um, there'll be a confirmation just to make sure you want to delete the rule. You'll just click yes on that and that'll get rid of the rule for you. Uh, as I mentioned, there are a few rules you're not able to uh, delete though that are connected with the lead section, but for the most part, you can delete whatever you'd like. Do you want to demo any of that? Okay. <clears throat> So I'm not going to actually delete a rule, but I'll show you. Here, I'll go in first and just show you. So this is the active checkbox, as we mentioned previously. So that's where you're going to disable any rules you want. 
And then to actually delete a role, as you can see, this delete button appears when you actually highlight a row. So that's you'll just click delete, and then you'll get this pop-up. And if you hit yes, that'll go ahead and delete the row for you. All right, so that's how the duplicate rules work, defining what logic is going to be used to find the duplicates. Um, as we mentioned, there's two different mechanisms for searching for duplicates. So the first one is the local duplicate search. And again, this is the search that occurs automatically when creating a new record. Um, so this is only using the duplicate rules that have that use this rule on save checkbox checked. And what's going to happen if it finds a potential duplicate is it's going to give the user an alert and it's going to allow the user to decide what to do. The user can still proceed to save the record. They can say, nope, sorry, I know better than you, computer, and I'm going to create this record anyways. Um, or they can go back and maybe make a change if they realize they missed something um, or don't want to create the record anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend I'm a you know, clueless user who hasn't bothered to pay attention to what data is in the system, um, or I'm just really busy and having a bad day, whatever the case might be. I shouldn't judge people, I guess. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new account, and I'm just going to be really bad and just put the name in and go ahead and click Save. And I get this warning that it has found, in this case, two potential duplicates to the account that I'm about to create. And here's where I have that choice. I can say, nope, I know best, save it anyways. Or I could say, actually, you're right. I shouldn't create a new record. Let me go back. Um, and I'll just close out of this and maybe go search for one of those accounts and update it. So the bulk duplicate search is, is a separate section where it's actually going to do the search on the database for records that already exist. Um, so the bulk duplicate search can actually be ran manually or you can, act, you can also set it up to run automatically um, during, uh, on whatever days and during whatever times you'd like it to run. Uh, one of the reasons it, it allows you to set it up automatically is because if you if you go into the search window, it's going to show you whatever the previous search was, um, and so you you either need to manually run it or allow that automatic uh, run to happen so it keeps that up to date. Uh, so either way, um, you're going to uh, be led to this duplicate uh, search window that's going to display all of the duplicates it finds in the database for whatever section you're looking at. Uh, and then next, we'll show you how to set up each of those du uh, bulk duplicate searches. So like Chris said, one of the ways you can do this is to just manually run the duplicate search when you want to. So I'm, you know, I've got some time today. I want to do some data cleanup. I'm going to look for my duplicates. I can just go run a search right now. I'm going to go into the section that I want to search for and then I'm going to use the show duplicate account, show duplicate contacts, you know, whatever section I'm in action um, to go into the duplicate view. At that point, like Chris said, it's either going to show me the previous search results if there is a previous search or it's going to prompt me to, lock, to run it, you know, at that current time. Um, once the search is completed, it will give you a notification, a system notification that the merge or the duplicate process is done. And then you can review the possible duplicates that it found and either merge them or mark them as not duplicates. Um, that's actually a really nice feature. If you mark something not as a duplicate, it won't give you that again next time. So once I've said no, I know these guys have similar names or whatever the case might be, but they're not records that I want to merge, it won't keep giving them to me to look at every single time I do a duplicate search. Okay, so we did have a question come in asking, um, can I do a bulk duplicate search on a folder or filter I have open in a section? I don't believe so. I think the duplicate search is always going to run against your entire database in that section, yeah, your entire, the entire table. section, right. So, this is where I'm going to go to get to those duplicates. So I'm going to go to the section that I'm going to be searching or looking at. I'm going to use accounts for my example. 
and just click this show duplicate account action. Now, I actually have a previous search in here from when I was setting up for the webinar. Um, so depending on whether you've done a previous search or not, when you get to the screen, either you'll see search results like I'm seeing here, or you'll see just a message saying that there are no results to review. Would you like to run a duplicate search? If you want to run a new search, you can come up to your action menu and just say run duplicate search. Oops, helps if I click that right. It does clear out the previous search and give you a new set of results. And it goes ahead and it starts running that search. Depending on the size of your database, this could take a little bit of time to do because it's got to process through all of your uh, records with multiple different rules that it's checking on. I have a pretty small database in here, so this should be pretty much immediate at this point. Um, and I should be able to come over here and see that, yes, my deduplication task is completed. So I can either refresh this page or just click the link here, what's going to take me back to that same page I was already on, but refreshed. And we're going to talk about what you do next in a minute after we talk about the automatic process since you would do the next steps the same either way. Sure, so with the automatic process, uh, this just allows you to set that set up Creatio to run that search automatically. Uh, so it just it allows you then to go into your account section whenever you want and know that you have an up-to-date search. Uh, so so there's there's a couple ways to to get to um, to get to this, but it, you you actually set it up in the same location where you're setting up your duplicate rules. So we'll we'll take you there and show you that. But essentially, all you have to do is set the time and day of week uh, for the search to happen on whatever sections you want. Initially, you'll only see uh, it only displays the sections that actually have current rules set. So um, Initially, lots of times it'll just have leads contact the accountant, uh, and then you, as you add rules, you'll see the other sections appear. Uh, so we can go ahead and show you how to set that up as well. So under the Actions menu here, you'll see Set Up Automatic Duplicate Search. So you'll click on that. And then as I mentioned, you'll see the, the sections on the left-hand side here. I did create a rule for the product section, so that one now appears here as well. But essentially, all you have to do is highlight the section. And then on the right-hand side here, just at the time you want the duplicate search to run, you could say, you know, if you want it to run at 5 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So you know that you can go in here any Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you'll have an up-to-date search. So from there, all you do is click Apply Settings, and it'll save those. Um, and as I mentioned, any section uh, that you want to set an automatic search here, you just need to create rules uh, beforehand. So whether the duplicates are searched for manually or automatically, either way the merge process is manual. You need to look at the results and see if those are actually duplicate records and decide whether to merge them. Um, you can also merge records without running a duplicate search. If you just happen to see in a list that you've got two records that should be merged, you can also select them right in that list view and go to your action menu and merge them. So um, either way, it's going to follow the exact same process. When you do a merge, it's going to look at whether there are any differences between those two records that you're merging. So anything that's unique for one versus the other, um, meaning, for example, it's filled out on one of the records that you're merging, but it's blank on the other one, it's going to automatically keep the value that's filled in. If, however, you've got the same field filled out with two different values on those two records, it's going to prompt you to decide which one to keep. So for any fields where you have different data on the two different records, it's going to ask you what to do. And so an example of that, if I go back to my search results, which I can actually get to them right from here, so I'll just do that and save a click or two. 
could be the same view that I get to from going to accounts and then that show duplicates. I've got a couple of different examples of records here. So let's say I want to merge these two XT group accounts. I can select them individually with a checkbox or I can also save myself some time by just clicking select all, especially if there were more than two. Uh, these examples both only had two records each, but there could potentially be more than that that were found if you had lots of duplicates with the same record. And then I'm going to select to merge those. Now, I intentionally set this up so that we'd have some differences here. So in this case, there are six fields that have different values between those two records. And so for each of those fields, it's showing me those two values and asking me how, which value I want to keep. Do I want to keep this phone number or that one, this name or that one? And so I can pick on a field by field basis which values I want to keep. If they were more than fit on the side, I would just fit without scrolling, I could just scroll over and see all of them. So it's not limited to a certain number of fields or anything like that. And once I am ready, I've picked all the values that I want to keep, I would just go ahead and click merge and it would go ahead and finish off the process. Okay. Okay, we have a question. Um, if you have a large number of duplicates identified, can you search by any of the columns in the search results? I'm or sort by any of the columns in the search results? Oh, in this in, in this, this view? view, no, no, you're you're limited on in this view here. Can more than two records be merged at the same time? Yes. Yes. Okay. And I would say if you're concerned about having too many to wade through, I would start by looking at your duplicate rules and start with the more specific rules first. Turn off like the really general just name match rule and run with some really specific rules first. And then as you have cleaned those up, then go to slightly more general rules until you maybe eventually you do turn that just name match back on. But I wouldn't necessarily start with that if you know you've got a lot of duplicates in your database that you're going to have to clean up. Good idea. So with merging records, there are um, a number of things you need to keep in mind. Um, so we just have some additional notes here, and I'll go through those. So the record with the earliest created on date is used as the base record. So when you're merging, you know, even if you're merging 10 records, it'll be the very first record that's essentially used as the base um, record. So the new, what what would look like the new record will actually keep the ID and whatnot of that base record. Um, all unique fields, all unique field values will be saved to the merge record, as Megan just mentioned. All related records, such as activities, calls, leads, etc., uh, will also be saved to the merge record. So, if you have, you know, multiple accounts that you're merging and they each have their own activities, all of those are going to be saved to the merged record. If you have identical phone numbers, communication options, addresses, and noteworthy events, those will um, those will not be duplicated between the two. Uh, so those will just be merged. If field values differ between two or more records, uh, as Megan just mentioned, you'll be prompted and have the ability to select um, which values that you actually want to end up in the merged record. So as we mentioned, our, our examples just had two uh, accounts, but you could potentially you know, have an unlimited number of accounts and you still have the ability to select which values you want from each of those accounts to end up in the in the merged record. Uh, so all external links, including references and other sections that point to the records being merged, will now point to the merged record. So all of those references will, will be updated. Um, so such as you know, if you have a if you have a link to an account from a contact. Uh, that'll actually be set to the, the new merged account record. So the feed post of all records will be saved to the results merged record. So you'll actually see the feed post of all of the previous account um, records if you move, merge them all into a single uh, account. All of those will be available. And you can also merge rec or you can also mark records as not duplicates. Um, as we mentioned previously, this prevents them from showing up in later runs of the duplicate search process. 
So I'll show that really quick, that last, and then if there's anything else you want to show, Chris, I'll pass it over to you. Um, so I'm going to just take these ClearSoft examples and not merge them. Um, so these are actually set up as like a subsidiary and a parent company, so they would be records that I wouldn't want to merge. And so I would just select them and say they are not duplicates. And if I were to go ahead and quickly run another duplicate search, Come back and make it refresh. There we go. Um, this time it did not find any duplicates because I didn't have any new ones to find and it didn't refind the ClearSoft accounts even though I didn't merge them. Is there anything else you want to go through? Um, no. Okay. I'm so I think that wraps up everything on our agenda around duplicates. If you have any further questions about that, feel free to send those our way. Um, while you're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and continue on to talk about um, new releases since our last online user group about two months ago. There have been a couple of releases since then. The first was the 7.15.0 release in October. There was quite a bit of new stuff in this one, so I probably won't read everything on this slide, and this is already whittled down to just some of the highlights. Um, so this one had a lot in it. Um, the marketing product, if you use that, had a really major revamp of the email content designer. Um, really nice changes there, kind of moved everything into the screen where you're building your email template instead of j jumping back and forth between two different screens. Um, that also allows you to dynamically set things like the subject and the sending email address based off of parameters within your Creatio data, um, not just the email body. You can now basically make anything connected to the email dynamic. Um, the sales section, the forecast section was revamped. It's actually beta in uh, this 7.15.0 release, but it became standard functionality in the 7.15.1 release. So um, that's going to allow you to um, add data manually, to map database fields. So essentially to create your own forecast, not just forecast on the set of parameters that were pre-configured in the forecast section. Um, in the core section, there were some changes around logo setup um, and um, being able to change your favicon, as well as some speed and productivity improvements with some changes and updates to the bulk duplicate search. Um, fun timing with our presentation today. Mm -hmm. There were some additional portal changes. We've seen lots of that in the past few releases. So it's kind of just builds on that with some additional setup options and um, profile pages. And then on the administrative side, uh, this again is a continuation. We've seen some updates recently around change log. So they added some new functions here with the ability to search and sort, um, some updates to the integration log and being able to give people temporary access to the application without having to share passwords with them. All right, and then soon after that, we had the 7.15.1 release. Uh, this included some additional um, changes and bug fixes in the marketing uh, product. You can also now manually schedule the time of restarting a campaign that has stopped. In the core, they updated the global search, and that is now at uh, version 1.7.0. The application now also supports operation with the PostgreSQL uh, database management system. And also note where the events now display correctly. Uh, this was a, if you're deployed on Oracle, this was a bug fix that they, they did. Um, so the first version of, for, of Portal Creatio for Partner Relations Management has been released. So that was that's a big that's a big one there. Um, on mobile, the initial synchronization with the mobile application is now four times faster. So they really sped that up. Yeah. Wow. Um, in administration and development, you can now upload company logos in SVG format, which is definitely helpful. Um, they also made some additional changes to the, the changelog UI, um, so building on top of some of what they did in 7.15.0. Um, you can now filter log records by period and also clear the changelog for particular objects as well as for all objects. 
And then the, the last big one we noted in security and support was um, there's now additional options for remote, remote support uh, sessions uh, for users that are in the cloud application. So this is, this is allowing Creatio to provide better technical support um, and quicker resolution by cases. And we didn't put them in our slides, but just a reminder that if you ever want to see what's coming next, um, Creatio does publish plans for their roadmap on their website under Academy. You can look for upcoming release information. Obviously, that's always subject to change, um, but at least it will give you some idea of what features might be coming soon. All right, so as I mentioned, this is our last online user group of 2019. Our next one will be in January. Um, however, uh, you can expect a follow-up email from this user group with the recording, uh, which, uh, full disclosure, I started like three, one to three minutes later than we <laughs> actually started. So it'll be weird and cut off, but it's all the core information is there. And um, also the slide deck, so you'll have all of that. Um, so the January 16th registration, I just chatted to you all. If you would like to just sign up now, we're going to be talking about using the section wizard in that online user group, and um, we hope to see you there. And despite the typo on our slide, that user group's happening in 2020 and not 10 months ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, first we're going to travel back in time, right? <laughs> and we'll show you how to do that, too. <laughs> So thank you all for joining us today. If there's any last minute questions, go ahead and pop them in right now. Otherwise, um, we'll see you guys in January.